We'll be taking a look at the plus add-ons countdown widget and five of its very awesome and very useful features. We'll start with regular countdown pop-ups and a hello bar for Elementor. And we'll continue with a scarcity countdown, also known as an evergreen countdown, which is basically a countdown that resets itself. We'll take a look at how to use it with or without cookies to control when and how the countdown resets for the user. We'll look at how to redirect your users to a different page when the countdown ends, which is awesome for pages with deals that expire, such as Black Friday deals. The third thing we'll look at is changing the content, any content, whole containers that include anything based entirely on the countdown. And last but not least, we'll take a look at a numbers counter that we can utilize in relation to stock amounts in WooCommerce. We'll use it to create a sense of urgency on product pages by showing a decreasing number of products available. And by the way, you can personalize this based on product categories or other factors such as the amount of products in a cart. This means you can easily control when and where it shows up without having to create multiple templates for your products. Hey everyone, this is Tim from the Plus Add-ons for Elementor team. We launch new videos on WordPress and Elementor every week. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to become an expert. We create both advanced and beginner videos which are easy to follow and easy to learn from. So let's start with the countdown pop-ups in the hello bar. So this hello bar is built with the plus add-ons pop-up builder, so you do not need Elementor Pro for this. One thing to note here is that I'm using the Nexter theme, which is similar to the hello theme for Elementor, but it's kind of like the hello theme on steroids. So if we go into our pop-up builder here, we can see we have a few options for the pop-up type. Modal pop-up, reveal content, corner box, and slide. We can also control the directions, so if the pop-up pops up from the top, the left, the right, or the bottom. We're going to be focusing on the slide for the pop-up type and the top for the open direction. To choose the actual content that's going to appear, we just go under select content and choose our template. I'll just select my hello bar content section. Under extra options, we can control when the pop-up closes and under display options, we can control when it shows up. Pretty cool stuff. So the actual content, the template is built with Elementor. I have it over here under templates, save templates, hello bar content. Once I open it, you're gonna notice we have our containers over here and the one I'm interested in is the one that contains the countdown widget. So now I have my countdown widget opened. Under countdown date, we're gonna set the countdown setup to normal countdown. We can choose a few styles over here, but I'm gonna stick to the style three. Then we can set our date and time over here. Under label, you can set your own custom text here according to your needs. So for example, I can make it go from days to custom, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. Now a very cool thing is available under extra option. We can set an after expiry action. We have three options over here. We can show a message, we can show a template, and by showing a template, we can essentially show any content we want, and we can redirect the user to another page. The template and the page redirect are very exciting. You can essentially change out the content or you can make users go to a different page when the countdown expires. Next up, let's take a quick look at the scarcity countdown, also known as the evergreen countdown, which is particularly interesting as well. This is a countdown that you can use to create a sense of urgency, a sense of scarcity. You can nudge your customers into making a purchase. Once the user reopens or reloads the page, the scarcity countdown begins again, it resets. We don't have a countdown date over here, so we have to go under extra option. Over here, we have our reset time. This is essentially the time your countdown is gonna show and reset after. So if I set it to 90 minutes, it's gonna reset after an hour and a half. And we can also delay this. So over here, I have it set to 10 minutes. This means that after the countdown expires, it isn't going to reset until those 10 minutes are over. And if I don't set in a delay, it's going to reset instantly. Just above this, you're going to notice track user data. So what the track user data option does, if you set it to yes, local storage based, is that it stores cookies on your user's browser. If your evergreen content is set to, for example, two hours, and if your user closes the website, 
and then visits it again in an hour, the countdown is not reset, it shows the remaining time, so in this case it shows another hour. This makes everything appear much more realistic. I hope you're finding the tutorial helpful. We put a lot of effort into these videos and we release them every week. We'd appreciate it if you hit the like and the subscribe buttons. It helps keep us motivated. Also, let us know which feature presented in this video you like the most. Next up, let's check out the page redirect option. This is a very powerful feature. For example, if you have an offer that lasts for a limited amount of time and people visit the page after the offer is over, this is going to automatically redirect them to another page. So you're not going to lose visitors or force them to go through a page with an offer that is no longer relevant. So here's our offer pricing page, so the page with the limited time offer, and here's our pricing page, so the regular page. Before I set my time, I'm going to go under extra option and set the after expiry action to enable. Under select action, I'm going to choose page redirect and add in my URL, my link. So the regular pricing page that I want to redirect users to after the countdown expires. Let me just set my countdown date over here to a time in the very, very near future. And let's see what happens. So as you can see, it automatically redirects me to the other page. And if I try to visit the original link, so the offer pricing page in this example, it's again going to redirect me to the pricing page. Again, this is a very powerful feature. <music> Moving on, let's check out how you can change the content when the countdown ends. This is great for creating limited time offers where you can actually set it and forget it instead of having to manually change the content to end the offer. Of course, you can use this with anything since the actual content does not affect the functionality. So for example, you could use this in WooCommerce to sell a product for a limited amount of time and then discontinue the offer automatically when the countdown timer is over. That's pretty amazing. So over here we have two large containers with our content, two different offers. Let's say the second one, the dark blue one, is the offer and the first one is the regular price. So I want my offer to show while the countdown is active and I want my regular price to show when the countdown is over. It's very simple. Let's just go into our first one, the regular one, choose the whole container, the largest container, and then let's go under advanced and let's give it a class. I'll give it a class called normal. For the offer one, I'm going to do the same thing, go into the largest container, go under advanced, and I'll give it a class called offer. So the last thing we need to do is to go into our countdown widget, go under extra options. Over here, you're going to see class based section visibility. Make sure this is enabled. And then the during countdown class. This is the class of the content we want to show while the countdown is active. So in my case, that is offer. And after expiry class, that is the class of the content we want to show once the countdown is over. So in my case, that is normal. I'm going to set the countdown and update this. And let's see what happens. So as you can see right now, it's only showing the dark blue content, the offer. And as soon as the countdown expires, it switches and it only shows the normal content. Very convenient and very simple. So for our last feature, let's take a look at this very useful and unique fake numbers counter. Now this one is different because we'll be using it to count down the amount of products available, not time. I have our single product template open over here and again we have our countdown widget added in over here. Now under content, countdown date and countdown setup, I'm going to choose the fake numbers counter. Let's head on over under extra option. Under track user data, like mentioned previously, this applies cookies to the user so the countdown does not reset. In this case, it makes sure that the stock isn't just randomly changing back up if the user refreshes the page. So make sure you set this to yes, but while working with the widget, we're going to have it set to no, so we don't have any cookies interrupting our process. We're going to avoid the loop, so let's head on over to initial number. So this is the number of products available shown to users, initially at the start. So let's say we have 20 t-shirts, and at the end we want to show 4. So I'm going to set my final number to 4. 
Now the number range is basically the range in which the numbers can decrease. So if I set this to 1, it'll only go down in intervals of 1, which is not very realistic. If I set it to 2, it's going to go down by either 1 or 2. If I set it to 5, for example, it will go down by either 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. It randomly decreases the number within the range you set, and this makes it much more realistic. And now we have our change interval in seconds. So let's make it one for the purpose of the video. In an actual store, you'll want to set this to more than a second, perhaps to a minute, to show that every one minute, the stock has decreased. And now you can see the effect. Every one second, the stock is decreasing in intervals from one to five. And over here under fake message, you can set in your message anything you want. Just make sure that the visible counter stays as is and is included. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So you can see if I delete the B, for example, it no longer works. So just make sure this is included. I want to show you another great feature. If we go into our countdown widget and go under advanced, we have something called plus extras display condition over here. We can set our display rules to really control which countdown is shown to which product category. This enables you to create a single product template for all of your categories, but you can still have the countdown widget show to only certain categories, or you can have different countdown widgets for different categories. It's just a very convenient feature. So if I want to show this scarcity stock countdown only with shirts, not shoes, I can create a rule to include only shirts by adding in a rule, Wu current product category is shirt. So if I go to my shop page and open a shoe, you can see there's no countdown widget over here. But if I want to also add it to the Nike shoes, I'll just go ahead and add in another rule. So I'm going to press add item. I'm going to set the rule to Wu current product category is Nike shoe. And the last thing I have to do is just make sure that I set the display when is set to any one rule is true. Because otherwise it's going to want to display it only when all of the rules are true, which isn't going to work because one category is a shirt and one category is a shoe. So I'm just going to set this to any one rule is true, update this. And now if I go back to my product page and I open a shoe, I can see the countdown widget over here, but it says shirts. So what do I do in this case? Well, one option is I could change the text to make it more universal. Another option is I could just duplicate the widget and in the first one, just go under advanced plus extras display condition and delete the rule about the shoes. And, and in the second one, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to delete the rule about the shirts. And once I do that, I'm just going to change the text under content extra option change the shirts to shoes and let's see what happens. If I go into my product and I open a shoe, I get the proper countdown widget, only amount of shoes left. And if I go into my shirts again, I'm going to have the proper countdown widget. And you can also use these display conditions to exclude categories, but it doesn't just work for categories. It also works for the current product stock, the amount of products in the cart, and a whole lot of other cool options. So you can really personalize this and control when and where it shows up. As you can tell, there are a lot of things you can do with the countdown widget. It has a lot of very useful and convenient features. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like it and share it in your Facebook groups and communities so others can learn from it as well. Let us know what video you would like to see in the future and don't forget to subscribe.